Today we are reading our final cultural historical story and this one actually is about the Moon Festival which is a really cool time in February in China where they celebrate Yes, they celebrate and they celebrate with lanterns. They celebrate their ancestors. Actually, you get a lot of time off work. I used to live in China and it was like the most cool vacation time there. And there were lots of fireworks, lots of lanterns. I got to do some sky lanterns with some of my friends, some floating lanterns. Um, and so today's story will be about a little boy during the moon festival in China. Again, this is a historical fiction story, so it's not actually true, but it is based on some historical events and some people's experiences. It's called Lenny's Lantern, A Moon Festival Tale by Brenda Williams and Benjamin Lakeham. Lenny's Lantern, A Moon Festival Tale, written by Brenda Williams, illustrated by Benjamin Lakeham. Yeah. Now tell me again, what are you to buy from the market? said Lenny's mother. Lenny counted the items off on his fingers as he repeated the list once more. Moon cakes, star fruit, rice, yams, and peanuts for Uncle Hui. Good boy, said his mother. Can I buy a red rabbit lantern for the moon festival, please? Begged Lin Yi. Well, that is up to you, said his mother. I have no more money to spare, but if you bargain well at the market, you may have enough left for a red rabbit lantern. Lin Yi smiled happily. That won't be a problem. I can bargain better than anyone I know. He turned to go, reciting the first the list like a poem as he walked away. Mooncakes, starfruit, rice, yams. And don't forget the peanuts for Uncle Huey. You know how much he likes them. His mother called after them. Yeah, these are pretty pictures, aren't they? As Lin Yi cycled to the market, he smiled and waved to people working in the rice paddies. Very soon he saw Uncle Huey checking the fish drying outside his house. Are you well, Uncle Huey? asked Lin Yi. Yes, thank you, Uncle Louis, answered as he turned the last fish toward the sun. I'm off to the market, said Lin Yi. If I bargain well, Mother says I can buy a red rabbit lantern with the change. And will you be taking it to the picnic tonight, asked Uncle Louis. Yes. Will you be climbing the mountain with us, Uncle Louis? Of course, said Uncle Louis. I may be getting old, but I still enjoy mooncakes and peanuts. Good luck with your bargaining. <laughs> Lin Yi grinned happily and hurried on his way. Lin Yi smiled as he passed under the moon gate. That will bring me luck in my bargaining at the market, he thought, and I shall now live for five minutes longer. In the market, Lin Yi stopped, looking longingly at the toffee apples. Do you want to buy one, asked the trader. No, thank you, said Lin Yi. I have to buy moon cake, star fruit, rice, yams, and I mustn't forget the peanuts for Uncle Hui. But if I bargain well, Mother says I may buy a red rabbit lantern with the change. But my toffee apples are very good, said the trader. You could buy one of these and still have money to spare. They look delicious, said Lin Yi. But I really want a red rabbit lantern for the festival tonight. Goodbye then, said the trader, smiling. Maybe you will change your mind later on. Are you working on something? Mm-hmm, I think so. Lin Yi knew he wouldn't change his mind. He really, really wanted a red rabbit lantern, even more than a toffee apple. How much is two pounds of whole grain rice, please? Lin Yi asked the rice trader. How much money do you have? asked the trader. Lin Yi showed him. Why, you are rich, said the trader. You could buy my finest fragrant rice with that money. No, thank you, said Lin Yi. I have to buy mooncake. Yeah? I have to buy mooncake, star fruit, rice, yams, and I must... Are you upset? Do you want to stop reading? Show my lap. Would you like that? Is that better? Here you go. I have to buy mooncake, star fruit, rice, yams, and I mustn't forget the peanuts for Uncle Hui. But if I bargain well, Mother says I may buy a red rabbit lantern with the change, and I really, really want a red rabbit lantern for the festival tonight. Then I shall bargain with you. The man laughed and he st started with a very high price. Lin Yi laughed too. That is far too much. I will give you a quarter of that amount. Too little, said the rice trader. Do you think I am a fool? They bargained and bargained until eventually Lin Yi agreed to a sensible price, one he knew his mother would approve of. 
Lindy was feeling very pleased with himself. After buying the rice for such a good price, he was beginning to enjoy his shopping. So when he bought the star fruit, he bargained hard, and once more he did very well. At the next stand, he paused to look at a little dough figure. He wanted to buy one to play with, but then he reminded himself he would need to keep all the money he could if he wanted to get a red rabbit lantern. So he moved on to buy some yams. Again, he bargained well and put the yams into his basket with the star fruit and the rice. Now, then he thought, I have only the moon cakes and the peanuts for Uncle Huey to buy. But on the way to buy the moon cakes, the lantern still caught Linny's eye. He couldn't resist stopping to take a look. Would you like to buy one of my red rabbit lanterns for the festival tonight? Asked the lantern seller. Linny stared. He loved the large red rabbit lanterns that were decorated with gold, but he knew they would be far too expensive. No, I must wait, he said, shaking his head. I still have to buy the moon cakes. Then I'll come straight back for one of your small red rabbit lanterns. But there are lots of people buying mooncakes today. By the time you return, I may have sold the small lanterns. Please wait. Please, he begged. I really want a red rabbit lantern. Promise me you'll keep one for me. I'm sorry, said the lantern seller. Yeah. I have a wife and children to feed. So if someone wants the last red rabbit lantern, then I must sell it to them. After all, you may not bargain well enough, and then you will not have enough money for a lantern. Lindy hurried away to buy the moon cakes. At last he thought, arranging the moon cakes in his basket, now I am ready to buy the red rabbit lantern. Just then, a woman walked past, munching on peanuts, and he suddenly remembered Uncle Huey. Oh no, he thought, I forgot to buy the peanuts. He counted his money carefully. Even if he bargained well, he knew he would not have enough to buy peanuts and a lantern. His heart sank right down to his sandals. He had tried so hard. And now it seemed that his dream was over. He stood still for a while, trying to decide what to do. So he really wanted the lantern, but he also knew how much Uncle Huey loved peanuts. Biting his lip and wiping away his tears, Lenny turned firmly away from the lanterns and went to buy Uncle Huey's peanuts. Sadly, Lenny pedaled home without his red rabbit lantern. You're a good boy, Lenny, said his mother. You've bought everything we need for our picnic. We have beautiful moon cakes decorated with the jade hair and the moon fairy. We have the star fruit, and they will be delicious. You must have bargained well, especially for the rice and yams. But Lindy, what about your red rabbit lantern? Didn't you manage to buy even a small one? Yes, we want to sit up. <laughs> there we go, see? No, said Lindy bravely, trying not to cry. But there will be others I can see at the red at the festival tonight. It doesn't matter. But of course, in his heart, it did matter. It mattered very much. Still, Linny tried not to show it. Instead, he took the peanuts and gave them to Uncle Huey with a big smile. Thank you, Linny, said Uncle Huey. Now I have a present for you. What do you think it's going to be, Judah? What's it going to be? <gasps> Linny was speechless as he saw the red rabbit lantern. Oh, thank you, thank you, Uncle Louie, he exclaimed. It's beautiful, far better than any lantern I dreamed of having. And he beamed with it. How did you know that I didn't have enough money to buy one, he asked. Well, said Uncle Louie. Oh, you're going to eat my book? Oh, it doesn't taste good. Here, would you like a book of your own? There you go. Well, said Uncle Louie with a twinkle in his eye. Let's just say that during the moon festival time, many special things can happen, especially if you pass through the moon gate. We don't ask for reasons. We are just happy. And side by side, they climbed the moonlit mountain, Uncle Wee munching his peanuts as Lindy proudly carried his glowing red rabbit lantern. It's beautiful. And that is a legend of the moon fairy that I will not read today because he is not so happy with eating currently. He would rather eat the books. <laughs> so today for your challenge, if you haven't already guessed, I challenge you to make yourself a lantern. There's all sorts of types of lanterns that you can make. Um, you don't have to make one that actually glows since that's a little bit difficult to do safely unless you have some glow sticks. In my, my classroom when I used to make these, I would use glow sticks in the middle of them so they would still glow but it would be safe. 
I don't have any glow sticks right now, so our lantern's just not gonna glow, but there's lots of different ways to make them, and I'm gonna post a little tutorial on how we make ours later today. But I would love to see your different ways of making your lanterns. They can be lanterns that hang from a string. If you can make a floating lantern, I'd be very impressed. Or you can even just make a lantern that sits on the ground and you could put something inside of it like a tea light so that way it could glow a little bit and you could cut the paper to make it so it shines through. So there's lots of different options for your lanterns. Get creative with it. I'd love to see one that at least hangs from a string similar to our Lin Yi lantern. As you can see, this red rabbit lantern is on a stick and hangs from a string like this. But I'm excited to see what you guys make. If you can make it into a cool shape, that's awesome. Or you could just make it like a traditional Chinese lantern. You'll notice in this picture at the end of the story, a lot of them are just in circles. Yeah, a lot of them are just in circles. There's even a little picture at the back of this book that I'm going to post. And it tells you how to make a Chinese lantern if you want to make it that way. So we're going to go by this guide, but you're welcome to make it however you like. I can't wait to see what you make. And we will see you next week for one of my favorite themed weeks thus far. It's going to be a Dr. Seuss week. See you then.